What's up guys, it's Mitch Cleary here with Century 21 and the Kamara Cleary team in Peterborough. We're back with the Canadian Real Estate Channel and if you guys have been watching these updates that we've been putting out, you might remember a recent conversation that we had with Andrew Hines where we talked about short-term rentals, Airbnbs, vacation rentals, off-water deals specifically and we thought that today we would take you through an example. We're gonna have the privilege of going through property that some clients of ours acquired last year we're gonna walk you through a bit of the deal breakdown we're gonna orient you about where we are what made this a, a good deal and uh, how their first year ran peak season was renting at about $200 a night and so they were getting approximately $1,400 a week um, so that was $5,600 a month on this two bed one bath in their in their peak season alone they pulled uh, you know just a little over $22,000 Okay, so the first thing to discuss about this property in specific is that if you notice the properties up there, it's within eye shot, but then when you look over here, we've got the water right here. So this is Rice Lake. We're one on, on sort of one of the northern sections of Rice Lake. We're just about 15 minutes from the south edge of Peterborough. So we're, we're just outside of Keene, which is a small town to the south of Peterborough. Um, so we got good access to the city, but more importantly is that we have deeded water access but we're not on the water. It's not a waterfront property. It's a water access property. The reason I bring that point up is because that is really the whole story behind this property, this deal, and what what we're seeing in the area is some of the best opportunities for uh, short-term rental properties because we secured this deal at a price that never would have even been close, numbers we wouldn't even, not even have been talking close to the same numbers if we were on the water. So we have access to this, which the short term um, uh, renters see, know, and enjoy, but you're not paying the premiums of being on water, but you're still getting great nightly rates. So let's take it back up to the property and I'll show you what the actual lot and the property offers. But the key is, is that we're, we're just about a oh, hundred feet from the water and you have dock access to the top of Rice Lake here. Okay, welcome into the kitchen. This, um, to explain, give you a bit of a, an orientation to the situation here. So the midterm uh, winter or off season tenants are just packing up or at the start of, the, of April at the time of filming here. So they were gracious enough to let us in here, both the owners and, and the tenants. They're in the middle of packing stuff up to head up to their cottage for the summer. So it's a bit of a transition time where within a few weeks, this is gonna be going from uh, a midterm renter that, that got these folks through the winter onto uh, basically nightly and weekly uh, bookings via Airbnb. So we're in the kitchen. There's a really small footprint, but the ceilings were high and it was a really quaint setup right from the get-go. Got a great feel to it. So small kitchen. Um, one piece to note that the, the owners mentioned is obviously some of the initial mistakes they made was not stocking the stuff with enough uh, of, of the essentials, extra linens, um, extra propane tanks, sort of things that would save them from getting the calls on a, on a Saturday night um, from, from guests that they had. So just going to show you guys, we have two bedrooms. So it's not an overly large in, in terms of the bed count either and this still hasn't hindered their rates at an average nightly rate of about $200. And we'll go back into more of those numbers towards the end. Quick shot of the bathroom here. Just so you can see typical, um, you know, Pinterest, uh, Instagram HGTV look to get the good quality photos that they needed for their bookings. Um, so that's that's it. We'll head downstairs real quick. This whole place is heated by a uh, fireplace, which obviously they were a little bit worried about um, in their first season, but I, this obviously it appears to be no problems up to this point. Okay, so we're down in the basement. You can see heated by a wood stove, Buyers were definitely nervous about that when they started this. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it hasn't posed any issues up to this point. Obviously, got to keep the wood stocked up. Um, again, we see the, the midterm tenants are in here. They rode this through six months uh, from November up until so mid-April here, so, so nearly six months, so that the owners didn't have to worry about the turnover. And they noticed that in October of last year, uh, from September to October, they were basically full occupancy 
all summer and it went down to about 60% in September and then down to about 50% in October and then they knew that it just wasn't worth the sort of risk reward trade off of having that turnover and less bookings through the winter it made more sense to lock in one midterm rate that was closer to sort of a market rent of what you would get in town in Peterborough for something about this size. We got a laundry room back here. And again, um, the, the owners stress that obviously making sure that you've got a good stock of all of your supplies, um, sort of being in, in the mindset of the utility and, and the function of everything, it's worth noting that garbage is one of the, the, the notes that they said. For anybody who hasn't run an Airbnb before, um, you can run into some problems municipally when you get people to take their garbage out or if the cleaners don't take it. In terms of the coloring of the bags, if there's any mistakes there, it gets left behind and it can become problematic so they came on to writing a more specific rule book and basically getting people to take their garbage with them. Uh, I'll hit a little bit more on cleaning when we talk about the budgeting. Okay, so we're in the backyard now, and one thing that's very important to note um, to anybody looking at sort of future deal analysis, at the time we bought this property, um, th they were up against, I believe it was 12 offers, and they we put in a well and septic uh, representation warranty, very standard clause that basically says that the septic is gonna be in good working order right up until the point of closing, and it was, but then lo and behold, I believe it was about six months later, uh, they realized that the septic was having issues. Um, it was an older system this property I believe is roughly 50 years old and anybody will tell you the lifespan of a septic um, can can run from 25 years some will go 50 or longer but it all depends on the the use the quality of the original install and some of the external circumstances for example there was lots of large trees surrounding this one we're on a, we're on a you know it's it's relatively close to its neighbors and some of the the trees and so those roots can can tend to strangle off uh, the 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 weep the the tiles and um, so they just had the system fully replaced I believe it cost them uh, approximately fifteen thousand dollars so that's something that luckily they they had that in the budget but when you're going into a property of this age anything rural around with lots of trees around on these size of properties you, you just want to have that contingency in there from the get-go because you're likely not going to get the chance to inspect it yourself um, so uh, last notes is that this is a, a, a great big yard in the back, so there's lots of room for potential. They had a really good fire pit there. This all, uh, we're, we're just in the spring here now, so they're gonna go ahead and finish regrading and, and, and re-topsoiling all this area uh, to prep it again. Um, but but it's also worth noting, a good a good point that, that uh, Peter made here is that, you know, look guys, there's no, there's no water slide, there's no ball pits here, there's no rock climbing wall. Like people get, get a little bit too caught up, I think, in what, what is an ideal or what you have to do to attract uh, people for, for this type of, of investment. And realistically, you got nature, you've got the water, you've got a good quiet street, and that's all you need. And I think one last note about the winter time uh, tenants. People are always worried about what do I do in the winter in this type of situation. We're in a rental crisis all throughout Ontario. Uh, people are looking for all types and, and people think it's, it's black or it's white, that it's short term or it's long term. Lots of people need midterm too. And they it, it, it took almost no time just through word of mouth uh, to find people to fill this spot. They didn't even have to advertise for it. So that's definitely worth noting. Um, so let's head back out front. Well, let's go over a little bit of the deal numbers and then wrap this thing up. Okay, so we're, we're in the truck. It's a little windy down by the water, and uh, we, we figured we'd leave those the, the, the tenants, uh, their space in there to break down these numbers. So um, let's go over, first of all, when we talk about the, the gross annual income on this property, the first thing I'll say, so the, the number is, is roughly just over $40,000 without going into the exact number. Um, and I know that for an equivalent purchase price, we paid right around 480 for this property at the time. And an equivalent single family purchase, we probably could have rented that thing out for roughly a gross annual income of about $26,000 at a just, you know, a two bed, uh, no secondary suite and like no, no two sweet setup um, so in terms of getting your dollars to go to work for you uh, that's that's about a 53% increase in the gross annual revenue that we're able to pull through doing this through the combination of short and midterm rental versus standard long-term rental um, in terms of breaking that down a little bit more specifically the 
peak season was renting at about $200 a night, and so they were getting approximately $1,400 a week. Um, so that was $5,600 a month on this two bed, one bath. They had a pull out couch, uh, as you guys saw there in the basement, or you have the ability to have the pull out couch in the basement. Um, so in their in their peak season alone, they pulled uh, you know just a little over $22,000. And then they had a couple of slow months. Like I said, September, they were at uh, a 60% occupancy with roughly the same nightly rates. October down to 50% occupancy with roughly the same nightly rates. And then the six months over the winter, they had $2,000 plus plus. So the, the tenants paying the utilities at that point. I would say that's a, a relatively fair rate. It's probably already a little bit old. The, the, the next year's rate is probably gonna be a little bit different. We've seen rents increase in the city. So there's gonna be a bit of upward pressure, I think on that number this year. So a little bit of room to move there. And that's the beauty of this whole setup too, is that the midterm contract comes, it starts, it ends, the short term rolls over and you don't get caught in a 10 year lease where that long term rate is held and you have no recourse with your bills, your bills going up and no way to recoup on any of that cost or realize market uh, prices. Um, Let's go on to the expense stuff here. Uh, I'm not going to include the mortgage at first glance here, just looking at this from sort of a net operating income perspective, uh, because everybody's financing in terms of down payment, interest rates can be a bit different. Uh, their, their total expenses were just under $8,000, $79.20. Um, they had contingencies, that's, that's including insurance, hydro, uh, their heating, the property taxes, Wi-Fi, um, $30 a month for cleaning supplies, extra kitchen stuff, spices, salt, little things you might not think of, any extra linens if some get stained, um, and then they had a lawn care contract. So with their uh, mortgage on this, with their financing structure, uh, this thing was set up cash flowing approximately right around $15,000 a year, um, which when you look at this on a, on a cash on cash is really nice. When you look at purchase price of 480 to, to buy, uh, a net income stream of, of 15,000 is is really doing great in this current atmosphere. So um, we got the net operating income without financing right around $32,000. Um, and that's it guys. The, the biggest hurdles for this group was getting familiarized with, with the booking system. They said it didn't take long to start getting bookings. Um, keeping good with your neighbors in the area because a lot of these areas aren't quite uh, familiar. It's not like you're in a Collingwood or a Tremblant. Um, this is really sort of a new phenomenon. We had short-term rentals have always existed in these areas, but the platform of Verbal and Airbnb haven't been there as much where you didn't have the, the frequency of new people coming through um, and, and booking on such short increments. So you gotta really do a bit of work as they've told me here to keep good with your neighbors. Make sure that tenants read the read the rules um, and you've gotta be good to your to your 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 bookings too. Make sure that everything is there for them, making sure it's clean. There is, a, the cleaning is one of the number one things. This uh, particular owner did most of the cleaning themselves. Um, there was, uh, Airbnb will tack on a cleaning rate for you that some people put in their gross income figures. Um, they were uh, able to get a 90 dollar um, per stay cleaning fee. They said it cost them about that, but closer to $100 when they did pay somebody. Most of the times it was minimal enough work that they did it themselves because they live close by. If you're doing this purely remotely, getting those cleaning contracts in place ahead of time is something that we'd want to take care of. Make sure that we're not ballparking with the prices, knowing that we actually know the real cleaning price and that we've got somebody on deck to do it each time because that's going to be one of the main bottlenecks. Other than that, the other stuff is all standard. Lawn care, snow removal, is all stuff you're gonna deal with long-term and the handyman stuff. Um, it's really the, the cleaning and that seems to be one of the most daunting thing for people, but it's an overcomable uh, or, or it's, it's it's an achievable obstacle. Um, so so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this info. Like I said in in our, our market update with Andrew there, we're really, you know, myself and, and the Kamar Cleary team, we're trying to niche into this stuff a little bit more, understand it and help you guys, uh, you know, see this stuff as more accessible in our area. So if you're interested in this type of property, uh, let us know and these these owners are actually considering sort of upsizing into a bit of a larger project building something custom suit for short term and there's a chance that this exact property might be available off market if anybody's interested so hopefully that was valuable and looking forward to seeing you guys next month